Happy Thursday, everyone, and Happy New Year's Eve 2020. This is Crystal Lee Moore Lucier, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore, with Royal LePage Triland Realty in London, Ontario. And this is episode six of Realtor Life, a fun and entertaining way to learn about life in the trenches as a real estate professional in Ontario, and hopefully to learn some valuable lessons and takeaways. Now for this week's five circle goals, which are goals in the five circles of our lives, spiritual, family, business, financial, and personal. I hope you are choosing goals for yourselves every week and writing them down. What are your goals this week, or better yet, for this year? This is a magical time of the year when it's fun to dream and plan. Every year around this time, I update my vision board. If you have ever done your own or seen a vision board, it can be simple and clean or messy and chaotic, colorful and unique. The choice is yours. I remember one of the first times I created a vision board for business. I was at a motivational seminar and we were told to take some time to create the board. I chose photos and words from the magazine clippings available and created what I thought was a pretty impressive board. I specifically remember finding a Julia Roberts quote about her goal for photographs, to make it seem as though people are there with you. And that really resonated with me. In fact, it's how I use my social media accounts. I also put a photo of a map onto the board because I love to travel. Little did I realize that it included Guatemala, a fact I only noticed after I returned from a mission trip to Guatemala later that year. As the years have passed, it seemed less than ideal to choose goals from the magazines I had around me. So I started searching for images online and I created a vision board on a Microsoft Word page and then printed it out in color and put it up on the wall of my office. I also saved it as a background for my phone so I would see the images every day. If you don't use Microsoft Word, you can do this on Canva, any paint program or any program that allows you to copy and paste images and words from the internet onto a screen. It is also helpful to put on some motivational music I personally like film orchestra music from movies like Legends of the Fall and Shawshank Redemption. There are playlists you can find online. But it really comes down to what makes you feel alive and excited and creative? It's different for everyone. Once we have our big vision for the year, we can start with another 10-day goal sheet from January 1st to January 10th and then keep going from there. When I successfully complete a task on the 10-day goal sheet, I highlight it in yellow. If I do not complete it, I highlight it in blue, and then decide if I should bring the blue tasks forward to the next 10 days or not. If you need a copy of the 10-day goal sheet, please reach out. You can reach me at www.crystalleemore.ca or send me an email at crystalleemore at royallepage.ca. For my spiritual goal this week, I am purchasing my daily devotional for 2021. I may choose an ebook to make things a little bit easier. For my family goal, I'm spending the next few days relaxing and recharging with my amazing husband. And then on Monday, it's back to movie nights with my stepdaughter. I can't wait. For my business goal, I'm making sure that I greet Monday, January 4th with energy, excitement, and determination. For my financial goal, still working on saving for our investment property and have started investing with a friend and business associate here in London with CIBC Wood Gundy. And finally, for my personal goal, I am excited about my daily fitness goals and have been working on learning more songs on the ukulele. It is truly relaxing and exciting. I hope that hearing about creating a vision board and about my goals has inspired you to create your own vision board for 2021 and to choose or write down your five circle goals. I would love to hear more about them. Now, on to this week's story. 
When I met K and A a couple of years ago, I was hosting a first-time buyer's informational seminar with four other professionals. A real estate lawyer, a mortgage broker, an insurance broker, and a home inspector. There were five of us, and we were given seven guests, which included three couples. We were excited nonetheless, and decided to use the smaller numbers to our advantage. Instead of presenting once to everyone, we broke the group up into smaller numbers of one and two, and we met with each group for about five to ten minutes. K and A and their daughter sat down with me in the third session. I had decided to take my buyer's info session, usually something I do with my buyers in a 20 or 30 minute initial meeting and pare it down to the allotted time. All the while asking questions and getting to know the people in front of me. K and A had been saving for a long time and they feared that home ownership might not be something in their future for a while. They were not working with a real estate agent, so we decided to slowly build a relationship and I set them up on an MLS search. MLS stands for Multiple Listing Service and it is what feeds things like Realtor.ca. All of the listings that are registered with local real estate boards are part of this. After keeping in touch with K and A, we explored some options out of town and in town. We are all thinking that we might not find the right house. Finally, we found a house that they really liked and wanted to check out the open house, back when we were all COVID free and allowed to have open houses. And it was even in their price range. I suggested that they speak with a mortgage specialist to make sure that they had all of their ducks in a row. I connected them with one of my trusted colleagues and I knew she would be able to talk with them while not adding additional pressure. As it turns out, the open house wasn't for them. They thought of looking in Woodstock and saw a couple of homes with a colleague I referred them to, but it was just too far away. Finally, we found a house for them that was just 15 minutes from Guelph. We went to see it and they absolutely loved it. I called the listing agent and was preparing an offer when the dreaded reply came back. There was another offer. Oh dear. We submitted our offer and had to go back and forth with the agent. In my experience, amazing stories of hardworking families trying to buy their first home are sometimes helpful in swaying the sellers. So. We wrote a very nice letter to the sellers and included a family snapshot. We had an inspection clause and a financing clause. When we submitted our renewed offer at the top of K and A's price range, we also removed our financing condition. The rationale was that while the inspection was being scheduled and happening, the bank could get the deal processed and any unforeseen issues could be identified and hopefully resolved before we would have to make a decision on the inspection. We held our breath collectively. The call came. We got it! I don't know who was more excited. I think it was them, but it's hard to say. When we entered the home for our inspection, affixed to the fridge was the color copy of K and A's letter to the sellers. It mattered. People who build memories and families in homes do care if you're going to be doing the same thing. It isn't always a help, but there is some weight there. And now, a year and a half later, my clients are the happiest homeowners that there ever was. It warms my heart to see their photos on Facebook and I love keeping in touch. The lessons I learned. When you meet prospective buyers or sellers, it's key to remember that their timeline is the only one that matters. If they're not ready to buy yet, you can still be a helpful guide and stay in touch. It is appreciated. When buyers or sellers need trusted referrals to lenders, lawyers, inspectors, or insurance providers, this is an opportunity for you to help your clients and spread some goodwill amongst the trusted and supported people in your business network. When you are competing for a property, there are several win-win options available to you as an agent, 
including the safe removal of a condition, as long as your clients are okay with this, of course, writing a heartfelt letter to the sellers, an actual letter is ideal, or having the clients create one. I have another client who created this amazing letter sharing a little bit about the whole family. They also got the house in competition. Agent rapport, again, is important here. If the agent and I didn't get along or have a connection, it would have been more difficult to get this home for my clients. Listen to clients. There were key things that these clients needed, including a beautifully lit space for drawing, room to work, room to play for their daughter, and somewhere for the awesome car they had. Collaborate with the businesses in your network. I could have tried to have a seminar alone, but buyers and sellers need expertise from several areas, and we real estate professionals are only allowed to give advice about real estate. My clients were happy, and now they're homeowners. Very exciting. It makes me so happy to be able to help such amazing buyers and sellers. That's it for this week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can find me on Instagram at your home sweet home 519 Realtor, Facebook at Crystal Moore Real Estate Sales, or by going to my website at www.crystalleemore.ca. Stay healthy, happy, and grateful, everyone. Here's to 2021 that's full of success, laughter, love, and adventure. See you next year.